guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby and in this episode right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do some eager loading. In the previous episode, we commented out the render pose. I'm going to uncomment that and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just reload the page show you guys the the problem uh, so this is what we have we're spending about 600 milli 669 milliseconds rendering out our index page uh, because of this post so now we know that actually you know the, the problem is coming from these rendering these posts over here if I head over here uh, we actually are doing two things right there's a there's problems going on in two areas. We're doing the count over here and then we're loading the tags for each of the post. So see over here, post.tags, this is causing uh, the n plus one problem and tags post.count is also causing the n plus one problem. Now, just like the previous episode, I'm gonna just maybe like remove this out uh, for a sec. So I'm just gonna remove it and leave it empty. So we're gonna solve one problem at a time. So I'm just gonna render out each of the tags for each of the post. If I head back over here, I'm gonna do a reload. All right, now we go to the console, we'll, st we'll still see all the problem. But now we can solve this problem first. All right, so just like the previous episode, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to reproduce a problem in the console. So I'm gonna just run this query right here uh, in our console. So post equals post.publish limit 100. Just like that, yep. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to loop out the post for the, sorry, the tags for each of the posts. So I'm gonna do post.each do p and p.tags.each do t. Puts t.name and so there we go. We've reproduced the problem in our console. It's rendering out the tags, but at the same time, it's loading each one as it's rendering out each of the post. Okay. So in Rails, uh, in Active Record, there's two ways of doing eager loading. One is called preload and one is called eager load. Now I'm gonna show you the difference between them and you know, so you know which one you can choose to use. Um, and you know, and, and there's actually another th a third way, but it's actually just delegating to one of those two ways. Anyway, I'll, I'll, it'll be more clear in as, as soon as I start uh, showing you guys. So uh, post equal post dot published dot preload tags and limit 100 and now what's what it's doing is it's preloading the tags uh, in three queries right it's three queries because it's loading the the join table as well it's loading the the join records that is joining between the tags and the post so now let's try and render it out so post dot each do p and p dot tags dot each do t puts t dot name and 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 as you can see it's now just rendering out all the tags it's not doing any more queries that was it those three queries were all it needed to do right so that's great now there's another way which is called eager load so post equals post dot published eager load tags and limit 100 just like that. So now I'm gonna try just, I'm gonna show you guys that it works. So post.each do p, and then uh, p.tags.each do t, puts t.name, and, and. So yeah, no more queries. So that was it, those two uh, up there were it. Now the performance between them, uh, you could, you know, you could argue they're almost the same. Uh, I don't think in, in terms of performance, uh, there's any difference. The only difference is the true difference is the way that the query is done. So this is what the, the with preload, this is what it looks like. It's three separate queries, right? But with eager load, uh, it's using a left outer join to load all the records, right? Um, so check this out, left outer join, left outer join. Right. Those are basically the difference. Now, how does this relate to you? Like when you're working in rails? Well, for example, let me show you something. Let me, let me just, let's just say, for example, we want to do a query on the relationship that we just preloaded. So published dot preload tags 
And now I'm going to do a where tags name Rails. So I just want to get the tags that has the name Rails. I don't want any other tags. This is now not going to work, right? We're going to get an error because it's three separate queries. It can't, you can do a query on the relationship using preload. That's the point. Now, if I do the same with include, uh, sorry, with eager load, so let me just do post equals post dot published dot eager load tags dot where tags name rails just like that limit 100 this is now going to work so we have uh, a tags it's going to preload the tag eager load the tags that has the name rails so as you can see over here and tags name equals rails right there uh, so if you're going to do a query on the relationship that you're eager loading uh, using eager load will work uh, if you're not, then preload will work just fine. Uh, performance wise, maybe preload is a little bit quicker. I mean, I don't honestly see a difference between the performance. It's very minor, uh, probably negligible. Uh, so, okay, how do you decide to use between? Well, now you know how to decide. Well, there's another method in Rails that makes that decision for you, so you don't have to think about it. So post equals post.published that includes tags. So the includes method is going to decide on its own whether to use preload or eager load, right? So this is the third way. It's not actually a third way because it's just delegating to eager load or preload. And if, for example, I'm just going to do a straight includes like that, and I'm going to do limit. Now our query is going to look like the preload, right? So look at that. It's three queries just like the preload. But if I start to do some where, or where clause in here, so dot where tags name soups name rails now it's going to use eager load see that the query looks just like the top one uh, so you can see that it's now using the left outer join to to eager load all the objects that it needs because it needs to do the where clause right uh, so includes makes that decision for you Right, so it's 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 a pretty safe bet to just use includes, right? All right, so we're gonna use this solution in our application. So I'm just gonna copy this includes over here, head over into the text editor, and paste this over here. I'm just gonna hit reload uh, once we've put in that includes and everything is working. If I head over to the server, we will see that it is now uh, using uh, eager loading in our uh, it's using preload in this case uh, in in our controller. And uh, don't pay that much attention to this these uh, time response time over here. Uh, in later in this video, I'm gonna show you a benchmark uh, like with graphs and charts and everything to show you the difference between without eager loading with eager loading. And I've also added a third solution, right? So this is not it. This is not the fastest solution. There is another solution. I'll talk about it later in the video. All right, so now we have this eager loading in our application. Uh, if I head over into the browser, we'll see that we're still missing the count. Now, if I put the count back into the view, so for example, uh, so now we put tag.post.count back. If I do a reload and take a look, you're going to say, darn it, we were almost there, but not quite. So now we need to solve the problem for this count as well. Now in Rails, uh, in eager loading, we can't really use what we you learned with uh, with the the category count. So what I've done is uh, there is actually a solution where we can use a hash table to uh, you know to to it, it contains the the key is the the tag ID and the the value is going to be the, the amount of count for that tag. So let me illustrate that in the console over here. So I actually uh, done it already over here. Well, let me just clear a screen and show it to you guys once again. So tags are with count. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do tagging dot group taggings dot tag ID dot count. And basically it's going to return us this hash over here. And when we render out the tag, we just pass the, the ID in there and we'll get the count that we need. Right. Uh, the reason why we can't use the same way as, uh, you know, as with this is because we're, it's a little bit more complex in this case. It's a many to many and there's like three tables involved. Uh, so using something like this would not work with includes. Uh, so that's why we need to use a separate query to just hold the count and use that hash and then we use a hash lookup in our view. So let me just go ahead and show you guys that over here. 
So I'm going to copy this line over here, head over into the controller. And over here, I'm going to put that and make that an instance variable. So tags with count, change that name to tags post count. And what I'm going to do here is in our view, uh, I'm going to use tags post count. And I'm going to use a, a tag ID as the lookup value, right? Just like that, I'm going to head over to the browser, hit reload, and now we have the count, right? So if I head back to the server, we can see that it's still super fast, right? Um, all right, so how much faster is it? And is there a better solution? The answer to those question is, so the, the answer to the, is there a better solution is there is a better solution. We can go faster, right? Um, and how much faster is it? Well, let's take a look. All right, so here's our benchmark. Let's take a look. All right, so without the eager loading, we're uh, about, on average, about 579 milliseconds. So let me tell you a little bit about my uh, benchmark, uh, you know, the, the way I do my benchmark. Uh, basically, I've, I take a three average response, response time from each, you know, solution. So without, I, I reload the browser uh, four or five times and I take the last three and then I take an average of that. So basically the result is right here, 579 milliseconds. And with eager loading, uh, it's 158 milliseconds. So that's a lot faster, uh, significant improvement. So I'm gonna head over to the next slide and I'm gonna show you what it is, the fastest solution, right? So what is the fastest solution? The fastest solution is a custom query that we custom built from the ground up. Now it's, about 50 milliseconds faster. Uh, so it's not, the performance improvement is not as massive as with, you know, going from without eager loading to eager loading. Uh, a custom solution can shave off quite a significant amount. I mean, when you're really down to that level, uh, you're really, really getting the most out of your database, right? Uh, creating a custom query. So um, I don't wanna go into too much detail, but let's just say that the custom query is super, super cool. There's a lot of concepts involved. We're gonna be using ARL, so A-R-E-L, uh, if you don't know what it is, look it up. Uh, and uh, you, it's su such a cool thing. You're gonna learn so much. And it's definitely not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of uh, code involved. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is all just for good fun and learning, right? Uh, you know, in, in, a, in a real production environment, most of the time, eager loading will be good enough uh, to get you by. But if you really wanna get that extra bit of performance out from your application, going with a custom query will get you that extra performance, right? All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, N plus one series so far, and uh, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and leave any comment you have in the section below. I'll see you guys in the next episode.